This is the scene at the end of what I can only describe as a shameful night for boxing here in Yankee Stadium, New York. It's been almost half a century since the famous Ali Norton trilogy ended, and the conclusion of their last fight remains one of boxing's most controversial decisions, as most observers felt that Norton had won the fight. And for a long time I thought there was no debating that. I thought the decision was purely political and money driven. Ali was a global mega star at the time and it was in boxing's best interest to keep him champion while he still had some fighting left in him. Then one day I uploaded a highlight video of the fight and found out to my surprise that some of you thought that Ali had won by a margin. So to make sure these were not isolated comments, I posted a poll and holy shit I wasn't ready for this. 75% of you think that Norton didn't win. So despite the memory of a boring fight, I reluctantly decided to watch it again so that I can analyze it and score it as we go along. And by the end of this video, we'll find out whether or not my opinion has changed regarding the judge's decision and those who think that Ali won. Spoiler, it hasn't. But a little bit of context first. In 1973, Muhammad Ali was rebuilding a winning streak after failing to regain the title, and one of his tune-up fights was against a former Marine named Kenny Norton, who at that time was a total unknown. That night, Norton fights the fight of his life and shockingly gets a split decision victory. Six months later, the two meet up for the rematch, and this time, Ali wins by a split vote. The following year he becomes champion again and is left with a final score to settle with Norton, leading up to their 1976 showdown at Yankee Stadium. And it was a pretty big event at the time, because Norton was the only fighter that Ali hadn't beaten and was yet to prove that he could beat. So anyway, we're back in Yankee Stadium, Joe Lewis gets introduced to the crowd and… wait. Does this guy seem familiar to you? Then we have Norton walking up to the ring, followed by Ali. There are some cute taunting and staring going on between the two. He's trying to psych him now. He's coming over to the corner. He's sneaking by. And this Watch this now. Been... He's getting ready for a little bit of action. Don't hold me back, Doc! Don't hold me back! Now you guys don't worry. I won't walk you through every punch of each round or I'll be here all fucking day. I've got the scorecards from all three judges of this fight. And unless I need to explain why I disagree with their scoring, I won't spend too much time on it because 15 rounds is a lot. So the first two rounds are split. I gave the first one to Ali and the second one to Norton, just like all three judges did. And early on, you can tell this is a pro Ali crowd because whenever he flurries, almost everybody is up on their feet. Look at that guy. Even between rounds, Ali is pumping up the crowd. I swear this guy never stops. Look at Norton, he doesn't give a f Round 3 was a hard one to score for me. Norton landed the most effective punches of the round, but Ali was dominating on the outside most of the time and got a good combination in, so I'm gonna call it even. Oh, look at that. Seems like Ali gave up on the rally thing, huh? Round 4. Ali opens up with a nice counter, and I don't know what the hell Norton is winning for to fight back. He's being so wild when he throws, it's to wonder if he does it on purpose. <laughs> Oh, finally. Well, we're 30 seconds left in the round, and I'm starting to get mad at Norton, because he doesn't do shit in this round. Even though Ali doesn't connect much, at least he's trying. And you know what? Even though Norton backs him up on the ropes and lands the bigger shots in the end, I decided screw it, I'm gonna give this one to Ali. Also, I don't like to bring this traditional championship role, but it so applies here. When you're the challenger, you're not supposed to take it easy for two-thirds of the round. You're supposed to take the fight to the champion. Here it looks like Ali is trying to take the title away from Norton. Now we're going to be really quick from round 5 through 9, cause all three judges scored them the same and so did I. Round 5 and 6 were Norton's. While Ali did nothing but clown, Norton was working him on the body. I know I said I wasn't gonna walk you through every single punch, but in round 6, there is one in particular that I have to show you. Shot to the body, doubled up I'm not a professional fighter, but honestly if I were, this is the only liver shot I would trade for a punch in the face. Round 7 was Ali's, even though he didn't do any real damage, he was the most active and landed more punches. In round 8, Norton was the most aggressive, Ali lost the round with his back on the ropes, while Norton was hammering him to the body. Round 9, Ali dances for the first time of the fight and the crowd goes crazy. Although Muhammad, if you could just... Throw a punch, please. Come on, Muhammad, one punch. There's a right hand. And you know what? Ali might actually get the round if Norton doesn't land a big... That's a hard right by Kenny. Damn it. 
Now that is the best punch of the round. Ali gets him back with the uppercut and the round ends. There's no decisive winner here. Though considering Ali is the champion, I'm going to call that stupid championship roll again and give it to him. Round 10, nothing serious landed. But based on accuracy, I'm gonna give this one to Norton. And for those of you who think I got it wrong, like the two judges who gave the round to Ali, I found this round by round punch stat. And there you can see that Norton landed more with a higher connect percentage. So leave me alone. Seriously, I'm getting tired of this. As we enter the last third of the fight, I should let you know that two of the judges have Norton leading and so do I. The other judge has it even. Now be ready, because we're getting into what I think is the most controversial part of the fight. In round 11, Norton was more effective with the jab, but Ali landed more power punches and overall had a more commanding presence. So I gave him the round, just like all three judges did. Round 12 was Norton's. He scored the best punch of the round and was the most active of the two. One judge had it even, the other two had it for Norton. Round 13 is the kind of round that gives me amnesia. Because in the beginning, Norton scores big time and I'm pretty sure he's gonna get the round. Then for the next minute and a half, there is hesitation from both fighters. And by the time Ali wakes up and starts punching, I've already forgotten that Norton was dominating in the first place. This is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to score a fight Ken Norton's in. Because when he has the momentum going his way, he doesn't capitalize on it. He just lets it die out. This round is another tough one to score. Nah, yeah, screw it. I'm gonna call it even too. Round 14. Norton catches Ali there with a nice jab. Hopefully I won't forget it. He's once again the most accurate of the two and lets the better punches. Ali keeps missing him. This is another good round that I gave to Norton. One more round to go, folks, and according to my scorecard, Ali can only win by a knockout, and considering how spent he is, it'd already be an act of courage if he comes out at the bell. Final round, Ali tries to dance and jab, but Norton nails Ali with the right hand and finishes strongly by swarming him in his own corner, earning him the last round in my card. So there you have it, folks. I've got it eight rounds to five for Norton, with two rounds even. And honestly, I think my scoring was generous to the champion. By throwing more punches, Ali indicated his will to enforce his fighting style, which is to box on the outside. But ring generalship can only be validated as long as you're actually scoring. Hitting hair alone shouldn't get you the round. Let's take the last round of the fight for example. Ali threw more than twice as many punches than Norton, yet out of 55 punches thrown, only 10 of them landed. That's not even 1 out of 5. Norton only threw 19 power punches, but connected over half of them, and it's still more than Ali's total. Then again, some of you might say, well, quantity doesn't equal quality, and the judges don't have access to those numbers anyway. And you're right, I just wanted to show you the facts. As for the first argument, based on how long it took both men to recover from each other's punches and how hard they were, I would say that the one that Norton landed were more effective. Even that picture alone at the end should tell you who won the round. Yet all three judges scored it in favor of the champion. Anyway, to sum it up, Ali was the most active fighter, but Norton was the most effective. He landed the harder punches, showed better defense and accuracy. And as much as I think it's debatable to give a round to a challenger who threw less punches, I find it even more contentious to give it to a champion who's been outboxed. That's my opinion. As for the two men of the fight, they will never meet inside a boxing ring again, but the good news is, Norton would eventually become heavyweight champion of the world two years later. So not a totally sad ending after all. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video, feel free to let me know what you think, and before I leave you, let me give a quick shout out to one of my artist buddies, Paul Smith. Paul and I met at the 40th anniversary of the Holmes Cooney fight this year in England. His craft is mostly paintings of boxing action scenes and most recently one made of Muhammad Ali. He also posts videos of his art process. So make sure to go check out his channel or his website if you're interested. I'll put a link down in the description. That's it for me. Bye.